19 things to know before you go to Tokyo, Japan. I'm Chris, this is Tover. We are the internet's number one human and stuff panda traveling duo. This is Yellow Productions. We do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. And in this video, we're gonna tell you everything you need to know to visit Tokyo, Japan. And each one of these scenes is gonna be shot in a different place in Tokyo, starting here at Shibuya Scramble, the world's busiest pedestrian crossing where everybody crosses in all the directions all at one time. First thing you need to know before you go to Tokyo is just some general information about it. Tokyo, it's the capital of Japan, and Tokyo literally translates to East Capital. It is the world's most populated metropolis. It feels a little bit like science fiction meets old school, particularly here in Shibuya with the tall buildings, the light-up signs, the noise, the blaring, the neon, robots, sumo, everything is in this city. Tokyo has a population of 14 million people. About 11% of Japan's population live here in Tokyo. The greater Tokyo region population is about 35 million people. Tokyo actually has a lot of green space and a lot of peaceful areas, so when you come to visit, make sure to seek out the peaceful places in addition to the crazy busy places. The second thing to know is just some information to help you get oriented to Tokyo. Tokyo is one of Japan's prefectures. It's kind of like a state. Now, it's composed of a bunch of cities, villages, wards. It's even got some outlying islands. And I kind of like to think of it like the equivalent of Washington, D.C. in the U.S. With all these cities, villages, and wards, people typically refer to things in Tokyo by the name of the train station that something is near rather than a city, village, or ward. So right now, I'm in Harajuku. There's Harajuku Station, and people refer to this neighborhood as Harajuku, one of my favorites. The city core is around Tokyo. Tokyo Station. The other big city core is around Shinjuku, and you can kind of draw a circle around the center of the city where this line called the Yamanote Loop Line runs. I'll talk more about that in the getting around section. The third thing to know is about getting into Tokyo. If you're flying into Tokyo, you'll be coming into one of two airports, Tokyo Narita or Tokyo Haneda Airport. Tokyo Narita is the biggest international airport. It's where most of the international flights come in. From Tokyo Narita, one of the best ways to get in the city the way I like to take is the Narita Express. It's a train that you take and it will bring you here into Tokyo Station, though it's quite a ways, so plan about an hour for that train ride into central Tokyo. The other airport, and it's a little closer to the city, is Tokyo Haneda Airport. There are less flights that go into it. It's mostly a domestic airport, but they have been expanding international service into Haneda. I like flying into Haneda better because it's closer to the airport. The KQ line is probably the easiest line to take into the city from Tokyo Haneda. A couple other ways to get from the airport into the city is the friendly limousine bus. It's a big orange bus that'll take you and drop you off at a lot of hotels. Now you could take a taxi, but if you take a taxi from Tokyo Narita, expect to spend 100 or 200 US dollars depending upon where you're going. Tokyo Haneda is a little closer, so expect to spend maybe about $80 depending upon where you're going. Now once you're in Tokyo, you're gonna need to know about getting around Tokyo. And I've got a whole video separately just about riding the trains and subways in Tokyo. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to check that out, but that's how you'll be getting around. On the trains and subways, you will learn to use them. There are tons of train lines, tons of stations. It can seem intimidating, but if you watch that video, it's actually not. A couple other things I wanna mention, because you'll be navigating a lot of train stations, bring comfy walking shoes, plan to navigate staircases. All train stations don't have elevators and you may have heard of the Japan Railways Pass. If you're just staying in Tokyo, it probably doesn't make sense to get the JR Pass. That only makes sense if you're going outside of Tokyo. Yet looking at the maps for the Tokyo trains can be quite intimidating. There's 62 electric train lines and more than 900 stations, but it doesn't have to be. If you're a tourist and you're here for the first time, think of the city on the JR Yamanote Loop Line. It's a circular line that goes around Tokyo. You can ride that most anywhere that you need to go as a tourist, and it makes it easy because you're just going one line around. Well, hey, here's our stop, so I'm gonna continue in a little bit. Some other options for getting around. There's lots of buses that run around Tokyo. I don't really recommend them for first-time tourists just because they're a little confusing and it adds a bit more complexity. Taxis, you can take taxis. The taxis in Tokyo are probably some of the nicest you'll take anywhere in the world. They are probably also some of the most expensive, so don't plan on taking taxis for long distances. Uber now operates in Tokyo, but you will find Uber to be just as expensive or perhaps even more expensive than taxis. A couple apps you'll want to have on your smartphone. The City Mapper app is a great map to help you navigate uh, destinations in the subway. Google Maps also works well in a pinch. If you're buying Shinkansen tickets, you can now buy them from your smartphone on this app called SmartX, but in that case, you need a Suica card, which is the pre
prepaid IC card that you use to buy subway tickets, train tickets, you need to link that to your app to buy Shinkansen tickets online. But whatever you do, don't even think about driving in Tokyo. Uh, rental cars are expensive, parking's expensive. Actually, there's very little parking, so don't drive, just, just don't do it. And when you're navigating the city, it's useful to have your destination printed out, not just in English, but also in Japanese, so that you could show it to somebody or you could show it to a taxi driver and help them understand. Because not everybody in Tokyo uh, can really understand English all that well. We'll talk more about that in language, but if you show them your destination in Japanese, then they can help you get there. And if you don't know Japanese, your hotel can help you write it in Japanese or give you a name card, say that has the name of the hotel on a card, so you can always show that to a taxi to get back to your hotel. The fifth thing to know is when to go. And we'll start with the summer. The summertime in Tokyo is hot and humid. Daytime highs average around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 26 degrees Celsius. It's really a steep city. Uh, if you were to come in spring or fall, those are my favorite seasons to come. Daytime highs are around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. If you come in spring, um, March and April, that's when the cherry blossoms are blooming. That's probably considered to be the most beautiful season in Tokyo, though it's also the most expensive season because everybody else wants to come here for the cherry blossoms. If you come here during the fall, you can see the leaves change color. If you come in the winter, it's cold. Daytime highs will be around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It does not snow very much in Tokyo. It might get a light dusting once a year, but the snow doesn't really accumulate all that much, but it can be quite windy. So the 40 degrees Fahrenheit can actually seem a lot colder than you might think, because it gets this really cold wind off the bay. The other thing to know related to rain, it can rain a lot in Tokyo. And as the temperature goes up, so does the rain. So summer's gonna be hot, but it's gonna have the most rain. Winter's gonna be the coldest. It'll have the least amount of rain, which might actually be better for touristing around. Winter has the cheapest hotel rates but the one exception to this is that October is typhoon season so if you do come in fall around October really do bring an umbrella and be prepared actually bring an umbrella all year round uh, so my favorite season is the fall and just to hope it doesn't come during typhoon time. And now that all being said, we're here in February right now and it's actually kind of warm. The temperatures in February here 2020 are about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And by the way, if, you know, I said it'll be less busy in February. The this is less busy in February. So you can imagine in the summertime, it's insane. The sixth thing you need to know is about the language. Okay, it's Japanese, but a lot of people wonder if all they speak is English, if they can get around Tokyo. And I'm gonna tell you the answer is yes, you certainly can. Now, while Japanese can be intimidating and you might not recognize some of these things, you'll find English signage is pretty good all over Tokyo. And they'll also have maps all over Tokyo that have Japanese and English. It's not like this all throughout Japan. You go into the countryside and it might just be Japanese, but Tokyo has a lot of international visitors. And so you'll find English signage on signs, restaurants, you'll find English language menus are readily available. You'll find the train station staff typically will have at least one person that speaks English. If you're at a ticket window to buy Shinkansen tickets, the staff might have a little flag or something that says they speak English. Uh, now, I always recommend it's worthwhile to learn a few phrases in Japanese or in any language of any place that you're going to, but you don't have to. Now, if you have a question or you need some help, just ask the local Japanese in English. Japanese learn English from elementary school, though they don't get a chance to practice it all that much, so they may have a hard time speaking, but they often understand it. So just ask your question or say what it is that you want in a restaurant. They might point or things like that, but just go ahead and give it a try. Before you come to Tokyo, you should know about the money. They use the Japanese yen. The exchange rate most of the time is about 100 Japanese yen to one US dollar. Now, many people think that Tokyo is really expensive. And while compared to some place like Thailand, Tokyo may seem expensive, it's actually inexpensive as compared to other world cities like London, Paris, and New York City. Those cities are all way more expensive than Tokyo. And yes, Tokyo is a place that you'll find really expensive and high-end sushi. The fruit is really expensive. This is a $200 cantaloupe, but not everything in the city is expensive. You can actually find really pretty good hotels in Tokyo for under $150 and still pretty decent hotels in Tokyo at $100. If you were in New York City, $100 would get you 
pretty much nothing. Now, when you're out and about, you're gonna wanna make sure that you carry some actual cash money here. While Japan is a high-tech society and Tokyo is a high-tech city and more and more places are accepting electronic payments, still many mom and pop shops and small restaurants will only accept yen. I generally carry about 20,000 yen when I'm walking around, which is about 200 US dollars, just to make sure I can actually buy things when I need to. And the good part about it is that the 10,000 yen bill, that $100, everybody will accept it. Vending machines will accept it and give you change. So they do have a really impressive cash-based society. Also, the Suica card uh, that you buy to get train tickets, you can use that at vending machines and 7-Elevens and a lot of other places as well. So now the question is, where should you get your money if you have to carry cash around? ATMs in Tokyo can be kind of finicky in that they have open and closing times. They often don't accept international cards. The one place that you can pretty much be sure will accept all international cards is at 7-Eleven convenience stores. The ATMs in there are open whatever the 7-Eleven is and pretty much all international travelers to Tokyo report really good success with the ATMs at 7-Eleven. And the last note about money, there is no tipping in Tokyo. No tipping at restaurants, no tipping the taxi driver, no tipping the hotel staff. They have a no tipping culture in Japan. Actually it can be considered rude or they might not know what to do with it. So if you're at a restaurant and you left some change there, the staff might be running out after you after you're left to give you your money back because they'd be like, what, what is this extra money you left here? The eighth thing to know before you go to Tokyo is about the food. And first of all, Tokyo has an amazing amount of restaurants in the city, 160,000 restaurants in Tokyo. Compare that to New York City, New York City has only 30,000 restaurants. So there's a lot of choice here. And by the way, you should know there's a lot more choice than just sushi. One of my favorites is katsu in particular, but the restaurants here, why are they so good? And they are really good. It's because they have really good ingredients, really great precision in making them often generations of experience. Many of the restaurants are passed down for generations and they often serve just one thing and really well. This restaurant in particular serves katsu and I will point out, and just katsu, like that's the menu. And I'll point out that the restaurants can be pretty small. Sushi restaurants might only have eight seats. This restaurant, if you take a look down there, only has seven tables. So something else I wanna point out related to eating in Tokyo, if there's a restaurant you wanna eat in that's pretty popular, and this one is too, come at off hours. My recommendation is try the popular restaurants between 2.30 and 4.30. So that's kind of a weird middle time of day, but if you wake up early, have a early lunch, then you can kind of fit this in and have a snack for dinner. Otherwise, at popular restaurants in Tokyo, because it's such a big city, if you get there at five o'clock, there might already be a line. If you get there at the end of lunch hour, they might have already capped the line. So try to eat the popular places in off hours. But definitely make sure you do look at their closing times because many restaurants in Tokyo close between lunch and dinner, so they might close between 2.30 and 5. A great option for finding restaurants that are open all day is department stores. There will typically be one floor on the department store that's just dedicated to restaurants. I don't mean the food court, I mean the restaurants. It's usually on the top floor. This particular katsu restaurant we're eating at is on the 11th floor of the Mitsukoshi department store in Ginza. Ginza has a lot of department stores, so a lot of restaurants that are open midday. You should also know that portion sizes are really small for food and drinks. We just stopped here at this train station and wanted to get a small strawberry juice. Do you see how small this cup is? This is my hand. This is the cup. This was 300 yen. It's really good though, but just know when you order a small drink, it's gonna be small. If you're planning on dining at any of Tokyo's really high-end restaurants, you should make reservations. Some of Tokyo's high-end restaurants take reservations months ahead, and some of them are invite only or you have to know somebody, like the restaurant made famous from the Jiro documentary, the sushi restaurant. It's actually a private restaurant now, and you have to know somebody who knows somebody to get a reservation. So my tip to you is if you're booking a nice hotel in Tokyo and you wanna book a nice restaurant, call the hotel's concierge where you're 
you're staying at, ask them to try and make a reservation for you at that restaurant, ideally two or three months ahead of your trip to Tokyo. And then when you show up at the restaurant for your reservation, make sure you're there on time. If your reservation's at 6 p.m., you better be there precisely at 6 p.m. If you roll in at 6.15, chances are they might have thought you're not coming at all, gave your table to someone else. So when you're done eating, you need to know how to pay. Most restaurants that are sit-down restaurants in Tokyo will bring you a bill as soon as you've gotten your food at your table. They'll typically place it on the side of your table or maybe even underneath. The other thing sometimes they do will be like this at this beef restaurant. They give you this that says, thank you for coming. Please bring this check to the cashier when you leave. And so you typically don't pay at your table. You'll pay at a cashier actually right behind me when we leave. If we didn't have this, then we would bring the check or the bill up there to pay. And just because they bring you the check right away, that doesn't mean you have to leave right away. Don't feel rushed. If there is a time limit on tables, they'll typically tell you that when you sit down. For some of the most interesting dining experiences in Tokyo and most atmospheric dine underneath the train tracks, we are here right near the Yurakcho station. And this is a whole like fish market, drinking area, hence the spinning fish. This is very lively at night. And the trains roll over about every minute in these restaurants. You hear a cocoon, cocoon, cocoon. It's it's just one of those really cool experiences. And you'll find them not just here in Tokyo, but all over, maybe not right underneath the train tracks, but next to the train tracks. So look by the train tracks for interesting restaurants. Number nine is drinking. The legal drinking age in Tokyo is 20 years old. And actually beer and alcohol is relatively inexpensive in Tokyo, particularly if you buy your beer and alcohol at vending machines and convenience stores. If you do buy alcohol at a convenience store, they are required to confirm you're over 20. The way they often do that is by having a little button on a touch screen that says, are you over 20? And you push the button that says yes. If you're drinking at some of Tokyo's traditional izakayas, these drinking and food establishments, many times they have a time limit where you can only be there at a table for 60 or 90 minutes. And just be aware of any unlimited drink specials. When they have drink specials, it's usually just for a certain amount of time. So it might be 4,000 yen, all you can drink for 30 minutes. And then the next drink that you order at minute 31 might cost you 10,000 yen, you know, the equivalent of $100 for that drink at 31 minutes. So be aware of all you can drink. You should know about Japanese vending machines in Tokyo. They are amazing. I'm thirsty, let's get a drink and I'm gonna show you how this works. So uh, there's a selection of beverages in here. Prices are generally in digital numbers because they change, they're all in yen. Uh, and it'll take coins. It'll take thousand yen bills, which is about the equivalent of $10 and give you change back. But if you want to avoid having all this change in your pocket, you can actually pay with a Suica card that we talked about earlier. And so how this works is you take the Suica card and you tap it right here. And then you go ahead and pick what drink you want. We're going to take that one and tap the Suica card again. And now it's deducted my amount and I got my drink. So Suica card, great gateway to Japanese vending machines. You're gonna find a Japanese vending machine in Tokyo nearly every 50 feet that you walk around. There are almost more vending machines, I think, than there are people in Tokyo. Okay, that's not true. I think there's one vending machine per 25 people was the actual statistic. Japan has something like five or six million vending machines for 130 million people, that's a lot. And in addition to this, there's a lot of unique vending machines and there's even like really high tech vending machines. Take a look at this one. This one, you don't see the drinks on it. You actually see the drinks on a screen. And this vending machine, in addition to having cold drinks in blue, you'll see it also has hot drinks in red. So if you want a hot drink, then you can get that there. It says my IC card's not accepted because I, I, haven't, I haven't clicked it yet, but it's a great place to get your drinks. You don't need to carry around tons of water from the hotel because you can get a drink pretty much any time you want at walking around Tokyo. Okay, number 11, let's talk about hotels. Where should you stay? And I'm doing this in the hotel we're staying in, the Hyatt-centric Tokyo Ginza here looking out the window. First things first, when you're coming to Tokyo, book your hotel room early. There's only 100,000 hotel rooms in Tokyo, which is roughly the same amount of hotel rooms as a city like Los Angeles, which has a population 10 times less. So the hotel rooms in Tokyo can fill up quickly, particularly in March or April for cherry blossom season. I generally book my hotel 
hotel rooms before I've even booked my flight tickets to make sure I have hotels and they aren't sky high prices when I want to go. Now I'd suggest in addition to looking at the typical Western chains to also look at some of the Japanese chains because the Japanese chains can often be better priced than their Western chain counterparts. But do beware, Japanese hotel rooms can be small. Actually, they can be really tiny. You can stay in Japanese hotel rooms that really don't have any place to open your luggage. Now, that's not to say that all Japanese hotel rooms are small. Typically, they will say how many square meters they are on their website when they're booking. I generally like to look at rooms that are about 25 square meters or more for them to be comparable to a typical American sized hotel room. You can get big ones, you just need to pay more. And hotels in Tokyo will often have more than just one type of room, so don't just look at the cheapest one, look at the rooms, look at the amenities, look at how big they are, look at their views, look at their beds, and pick the one you want for your stay. Now, Tokyo is a huge city, so what part of Tokyo should you stay in? Well, my number one recommendation is stay near a transit hub. Stay near Shinjuku, Tokyo Station, Shibuya, the Tokyo Skytree, Ginza, Roppongi, anywhere that's on a major subway line. And some of those spots are going to be better than others. In particular, Tokyo Station and Shinjuku are like the two most well-connected places in Tokyo. But I think the number one thing is to be able to get around because really you're not going to be spending most of your time walking around your hotel in Tokyo. You're going to be spending most of your time taking subways and the trains. Staying around the JR Yamanote line is also pretty convenient when it comes to transportation. A couple of my favorite hotels in Tokyo, number one is the Hotel Century Southern Tower. That's in Shinjuku. I also really like the Courtyard Tokyo Station Hotel. And when we were making this video, we stayed in the highest centric Ginza Hotel, which was also pretty good and is definitely going to make our list of favorite hotels in Tokyo. If you're going to Tokyo Disneyland, that's a little bit outside of central Tokyo. It might be worthwhile to spend a couple nights there if you're planning to spend a couple days at Tokyo Disney. And finally, don't expect to check into your hotel early or don't expect a late checkout. The Japanese are generally pretty strict when it comes to times. Many hotels, if there's a 3 p.m. check-in time, will be pretty strict with the fact that they won't let you check in even if it's 2.55 p.m. The American chains flex a little bit on that. Marriott, Hyatt, Hilton, because they know that people have come to expect that across their chains to get a slightly early check-in. So that's where you'll find a little bit more bend in the rules. Number 12 is shopping. And Tokyo has shopping for everybody. Cheap shopping, expensive shopping. But if you like upscale shopping, the heart of upscale shopping in Tokyo is the Ginza district right here. This street on Sundays, they close it off to vehicular traffic. It's the best day to come here and do upscale shopping. But in Ginza, you're gonna find all the big Japanese department stores, all the luxury brands, though bring bring your credit card because you're going to need it because it's expensive to shop in Ginza. Another great shopping district is Harajuku. This one you just take the JR Yamanote line to Harajuku station and head down Takashita Street. This street right here that has all of these people on it. This neighborhood was made famous in the U.S. by Gwen Stefani from her song Harajuku Lovers. But this is the center of youth culture in Tokyo. So uh, for the teens and early 20-somethings, lots of great stuff to buy here. Uh, and lots of great things to eat here as well. You'll find things in this neighborhood to be on the cheaper end of the price scale. Now many people think that Tokyo is a 24-hour city, night and day, and while there are people around night and day, stores actually close really early. I'm in Shibuya right now and there's tons of people walking around, but as soon as 9 o'clock hit, pretty much all the stores in this area closed just like that. Many department stores close at 8, you'll find other stores closing at 6, so make sure to check the closing times before you go shopping so you don't miss when they close. And when they say they close at 9 or 8, they will close precisely at that time. Don't expect to buy something at 8.02 when the shop closed at 8. Number 13 is about internet. It's one of my most often asked questions for people going to Tokyo. They say, hey Chris, how is the public Wi-Fi there? Do I need a SIM card? Should I get a Wi-Fi router? And so I'll answer those things right here. So the first one, uh, public Wi-Fi is pretty good in Tokyo. Hotels have fast internet access. You'll find public Wi-Fi at places like Starbucks and train stations. There's not like 
like a metropolitan Wi-Fi. So if you do want internet access everywhere you're going, then you've got two options. You can either get a data SIM card. You can pick them up at the major airports, Haneda, Narita. You can pick them up at actually many of the cell phone stores throughout Tokyo. But you can also get a Wi-Fi router, which is a device that you can connect your phone via Wi-Fi and be connected all the time. If you have an older phone or a cheaper phone, that might be your best bet for staying connected, getting one of those Wi-Fi routers. Because not all phones do all the bands that Japan uses, particularly if you're going outside of Tokyo to the rural areas. If you want to know if your phone supports it, you could just look online and see if your phone supports the bands that Japan has. For this trip, we picked up a data SIM card at Haneda. We picked it up at the JL ABC counter. We used Sakura Mobile and they were pretty good. This is video is not sponsored. That's just the one that we used on our trip. Number 14 is about smoking. Tokyo has a really interesting culture about smoking in that First of all, there is no smoking while walking on the sidewalks in most of Tokyo. Why? They don't want you to smoke your cigarette and bother other people or run into somebody. So if you want to smoke out in the city, you have to find a designated smoking area. Also, if you're not a smoker, you should know many restaurants still have smoking sections, particularly izakayas. So if you don't like smoke, make sure to find a non-smoking restaurant because the non-smoking section doesn't really do all that much to keep the smoke away. Also, hotels in Tokyo will often have smoking and non-smoking rooms. So if you don't like the smell of cigarette smoke in your hotel room, make double sure when you're booking your hotel that you are booking a non-smoking room. Number 15, there's a serious lack of public trash cans in Tokyo. Where are you going to find trash cans? Not really out on the street or in public places. You will find them in convenience stores. You will find them in train stations. You'll find them in department stores. You often do not find trash cans in public bathrooms, in public parks, and in public places. So what are you supposed to do with your trash? Well, what most Japanese do is they'll carry a plastic bag with them and put the trash that they generate in the bag and then throw it away when they get back home or throw it away when they get back to your hotel. So that's the option or to seek out one of those places that I mentioned. Another thing is if you're out and about, say you're eating something, you get a snack uh, to throw it away where you bought it from because if it's a to-go thing and it doesn't look like there's a place to throw it, if you bring it back to the counter and just say, hey, I just had this pudding cup, what do I do with it? They'll know that you want to give it back to them to throw it away. Number 16, let's talk about toilets. When you're walking around Tokyo, you'll eventually need to relieve yourself. Where should you look for toilets? Well, one of the best places you'll find public toilets is in train stations. Nearly every train station and every subway station will have public toilets. They are typically in the paid area of the station though. So make sure you use the restroom after you get off the train, but before you leave the wickets and the same way in the other direction. Other places that are great for public toilets are department stores and some convenience stores will have restrooms rooms as well. Most restaurants have them, but maybe not the smaller ones. You'll also find public toilets in parks and some other big public places. I would say public toilets in Tokyo are generally of the pretty good and pretty clean variety. You should know about information desks and booths, that they're actually useful when you're in Tokyo. When you're traveling around Europe and a lot of other places, information desks are just great places to get sold tickets and timeshares and these sorts of things. But if you're looking for really good information about where something is in a mall, or you're looking in a train station and you see an information desk, that's a really great place to get local maps for the neighborhood, ask what to do, ask what to see. And in Tokyo, pretty much all the information desks are staffed by people who speak English. So when you need information, find the little sign that says information, usually with a question mark or an exclamation point. Number 18 is rules. There are a lot of rules to follow in Japan. I'd encourage you to brush up on some Japanese etiquette before you visit Tokyo. In almost any place or site or attraction, you'll be presented with a good set of rules before you come. Uh, if you're wondering what this one is, this isn't no walking. This one here says no running at this particular shrine, no eating, no throwing trash away, no sitting on steps. You can probably figure out what those are. But some other ones you should know in Tokyo, people really respect lines. If you see a line, don't be cutting in line. Two, people really respect the red light and the no crossing symbol. People here don't cross the street. They don't jaywalk when they're not supposed to. And finally, people don't eat while walking. It's considered rude in Japan to eat while walking. You might get a slight pass as a foreigner, but you'll probably get some dirty looks. If you buy something from a convenience store and you want to eat it, the general etiquette is you buy that thing from the convenience store or the food from the vending machine and you eat it right there in front of the store at the vending machine and then you throw it away and then you continue on your way. 
So don't buy that Starbucks to go and think you're gonna be drinking it on the run. If you wanna drink it quickly, get it for there. If you're getting it for to go, it's to drink at whatever your destination is, not while you're walking. And the last thing to know is we've got more videos. We've got 100 more videos on Japan and 30 more videos on Tokyo. You'll find a few of them on the screen. The link's in the description below. As usual, Topher and I, we won't say goodbye, but we'll see you and maybe with him in the next video.